meeting to order, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. May I please have a motion to approve the agenda? I move that we approve the agenda as presented. Thank you, Bergen, as our support. 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 Thank you for all the support. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The agenda passes. Um, actually, first up is public participation. And she didn't check the sheet. I'm kidding. No. Does anybody want to participate? Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> um, it is most likely. There is no, there is no public participation this evening. Um, so just a quick reminder and recap. Um, we have seven candidate interviews tonight. Each interview is 20 minutes. We do have a five-minute break in between um, for people to you know, finish taking notes, use the restroom, whatever, um, gather thoughts. At the end of the evening, um, we will um, indicate, each one of us will indicate our first and second choice um, for candidates. Susan will be recording that and um, you know, see what kind of consensus we can get. And then just as a reminder, um, Julie provided us with a lovely Manila folder. Um, each interviewee has, um, we have a set of questions, same set of questions for everybody um, with space, um, and each question indicates who will be reading it. And then just out of an abundance of fairness, obviously, we're just going to ask all the candidates the same questions, so um, stick to the script. <laughs> um, and then just, um, just so everybody knows, the order of the candidates um, was actually the order that they submitted their materials. So um, it, you know, it was just the most fair way to order them, just honestly. So, um, so yeah. So our first candidate this evening is Nate Buckey. So absolutely. Hello. Hey. Hi, good evening. <laughs> All right. Good evening. <laughs> uh, thank you for applying for the Board of Education vacancy. We have all had the opportunity to review your letter of application and resume and would like to ask you questions regarding your interest in serving as a trustee. Uh, to begin, would you please share a brief summary of your involvement with Lake Orion School District and why you're interested in serving as a trustee? Please include specific skills, background, experiences you would bring to the Board of Education. Um, well, first of all, thanks for having me, and what a bummer the, the context of it. Um, and you said you read the letters on there, I the closing statement. Um, just. Obviously glad you're all doing this. It's unfortunate when you have an interim role and uh, gonna miss Steve. He's a, he's a cool, really cool guy and I enjoyed being on the board with him in the past. You had about four things in there. Yes, I will. brief, background. Uh, yes, I will reiterate, no worries. Specific uh, skills, uh -huh. background, and experiences. Okay, great. Um, the, uh, the level of interest uh, in, in sort of why. Uh, my wife teaches in the district. One daughter graduated, one daughter's a senior year. I'm a graduate of the district, lifelong family uh, in it. Um, prior school board member for uh, one term prior to that was a key contributor to the campaign for the building uh, uh, and sinking fund, building and site sinking fund. Prior to that, supported the long range planning committee that kind of uh, surfaced the need and the vision uh, for that. And I guess you could go all the way back to safety patrol at Blanche Sims. <laughs> I don't know how those skills translate, uh, except to say uh, I care a lot about this uh, community in this district. Um, as far as specific skills and thinking about the uh, time and the time frame, uh, having an interim person right in the dynamic of needing to select a new superintendent. Um, had the recent experience with the last uh, superintendent selection, um, so experienced in board, 
board operations, superintendent selection, and selection processes outside of schools, because uh, in my profession in HR and corporate, having the opportunity to staff select and understand that whole process. Awesome. Thank you. Sure. What do you see as the difference between a board member's role in district oversight and district operations? A uh, board's job is to set the policy, um, help set the direction, select the superintendent, and empower them to carry it out. So there's the key distinction there between uh, setting the direction and the parameters and then being part of the team that's led by the superintendent to implement that policy and, and uh, drive the operations. Awesome. Mr. Bucky, please identify the two biggest challenges facing Lake Orion schools and explain how, as a board member, you might propose tackling these challenges. Um, well, obviously the first one is we need to get a superintendent in place. So the primary one that's sitting at school is gonna start real quick here. So the most immediate one is finish the process that you all have started with the superintendent search, the interview process and the selection. Um, together with that is helping that superintendent get off to a really fast and effective start because they're gonna be kicking off the school year and driving it. So um, you know, district without leadership is, is kind of a dynamic you wanna minimize and keep in, uh, in check. So the first one is selecting the superintendent. I think right behind that, and if you, if you think, um, when a superintendent is in place on it, it's that common filter of do what's best for kids. I mean, our kids are still coming through a post-COVID reality and our students are still figuring out what that means and how to operate and it's, and it's different. And being able to focus on the uh, health of our students, creating the right environment for them to be successful in is the top priority. It's always the top priority uh, that sits there. Um, obviously sitting right behind that is financing and funding on it because that sets the whole thing up to go. So yes, for two, I gave you three. Thank you. Yeah. How would you approach an issue that comes before the board, which is in opposition to your personal views or your opinion is in the minority among your fellow board members? I think the first thing um, in having experienced that more than once while on the board is to listen listen and really understand um, what the perspective is, whether it's from, I'm not sure if in the context of the question, it could be another board member, it could be from the community, it could be from uh, somebody in the district. But I think the first thing is to understand and listen and understand what the perspective is and then balance that against what the policy and the needs of the district are and understand what we're trying to accomplish and how that fits in um, and being able to reconcile those. And then sometimes it's a matter of really helping the other person understand the trajectory and why decisions are made the way they are. Sometimes there's new emergent ideas that we hadn't considered that we ought to respectfully bring to the group to see if we got some new information uh, and should change our mind. And sometimes it's things that you just disagree with and being able to respectfully understand, hear them out and disagree is, is part of being a community member. Thank you. Yep. So board members get information on school issues from a variety of sources. What sources do you believe are the most valuable and appropriate for a board member, and how should this information be used? Oh gosh, boy, that's a, that's a big question, right? Um, I think the first thing for a board member is it's the Lake Orion Community Schools. It's not an individual board member's schools. It's not uh, an individual person's. So the way in which we are listening and learning and hearing out what's going on in the, in the community is critically important. Um, when you look beyond that and you look at what the opportunity is to see trends and think further down the road, um, we're not just trying to solve for today's schools. We have to be thinking multiple horizons ahead of where it is, and that comes from everything from buildings to financing to teacher contracts. Um, so when you look at the source of, it, of information that come from outside of the community and look at where are the trends, what are the trends in curriculum, where are the trends in programming, that all influences our decisions on policy making uh, in it. In this current time, there's gonna be a little bit less opportunity for that because it's an interim position for a handful of months till the end of the year. Um, so I think in that case, really thinking and listening to what the community is saying and needing on the things that have to happen in the next handful of months is gonna be the most important source. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
The Board of Education conducts some business during business hours as well as in the evening. We also interact with the community and the schools. And equally important, many issues that come before the board to decide and require to decide and review require time, ability to study all issues, and do the required research prior to the actual board meeting. How do you see yourself managing your time to ensure that you can devote yourself to the responsibilities of a board member? Uh, I would just look in kind of two perspectives. One, having done it before, I know what it looks like and what it requires uh, on it, and especially the sprint that somebody's gonna have to really quickly catch up to you all who are running fast in a process that's moving really fast. So um, having had the experience of going through it before, I know with a fair degree of certainty the time commitment that it requires and the time frame that it requires that commitment in. So it's go in wide, eyes wide open, don't underestimate what it actually takes and then put the time in. Thank you. And track record of doing it before. Okay. LOCS has an operating budget in excess of 105 million with approximately 7,000 students and 1,000 employees. This requires appropriate oversight by the board. Please tell us about your experience managing financial budgets and human resource issues. Sure. Um, well, I was on the board previously, obviously, so I have been through that process of uh, budget, budget setting, um, have been through the process of uh, really going out to the community to understand when we need to, to see if the community has an appetite for investing in the schools uh, and supporting that to do it. So very familiar with what that looks like and takes from the school board side of it. Um, professionally in the, in the business environment have bottom line accountability for large groups of people. Um, also consult with organizations to, to do that and understanding how their operations work. So not only experience from the school board side, but also on the professional uh, side. And HR is the area of expertise that I work in. Right. Awesome. Thank you. And then lastly, thank you very much, but is there a closing statement you would like to make as we consider your application? Um, yeah, just a couple of uh, a couple of thoughts that I had uh, had put down on paper as I was uh, thinking about the chance to talk to you all. Um, it is a short amount of time. Um, there's uh, I don't know all of the the people who uh, who are also in consideration, um, so I can only speak to to my qualifications. Um, it's experience. It's relevant experience. It's recent experience, um, and care a lot about it. So the commitment is there. Understanding what the time commitment is uh, is there. Um, as well as the experience to go through this process uh, with you all. Excellent. Yep. Well, thank you so much. I know Julie mentioned that you are not required to stay. <laughs> um, you're welcome to, <laughs> but you are more, more than free to leave, and um, you will be contacted, and we appreciate Have your great, time. Have a great evening. Thank you, Nate. See you all. Thank you. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, and as we do, obviously, have a few minutes between. Um, just a reminder, we have a rubric mm -hmm. um, just for your own personal use. Um, we're not tallying points or anything, but that's part of. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and just, just so, just as a reminder, um, you have a rubric to help you, um, you know, rank your candidates or however you choose to use it, so.
Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Thank you for coming. Sure, thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> Thank you for applying for the Board of Education vacancy. We have all had the opportunity to review your letter of application and resume and would like to ask you questions regarding your interest in serving as a trustee. To begin, would you please share a brief summary of your involvement with Lake Orion School District and why you're interested in serving as a trustee? Please include specific skills, background, and experiences you would bring to the Board of Education. Uh, I have... Um been a member of the Lake Orion community for 13 years. Uh, I have three daughters, um, 11, uh, excuse me, seven, five, and three. So I, my oldest is in third grade now. Um, so we've participated in a, ton, on a, a significant number of after school activities, um, get to know the curriculum and, and all the teachers. Um, regarding my participation with Lake Orion schools, um, I'm a member of the uh, Sexual, sexual Education Advisory Board. Um, my wife and I both serve on that board. And um, being able to begin basically my process of, of, of understanding uh, how curriculum are, are created and reviewed and updated over time uh, has been very rewarding and learned a, a tremendous amount. Um, so being able to kind of share some time involved in that board, uh, that's one thing that I, th I think I can continue to provide some time on uh, regarding ways I can help the, the school board. Um, with my, pro my, my professional career, um, I'm an engineer. Uh, I have significant technical background in writing specifications, reviewing technical documents, proposals. We've done RFP reviews, um, worked with contracts uh, significantly in terms of contract award, uh, legal in terms of how to properly adjudicate uh, and award uh, government contracts. Um, and facilitation of, of government funds. Um, my background is, is, again, electrical engineering, but being work, working for the Department of Defense, it's uh, all government funding, uh, being able to work with private contractors uh, to, to, again, help public service uh, is really my, my primary goal, and, and that's what I've always loved to do is kind of help, whether it's civil service or, in this case, community service. Excellent. Thank you. What do you see as the differences between a board member's role in district oversight and district operations? Uh, I think from my perspective, operations are definitely going to be more or less on the administrative side. Uh, it's going to be funding, uh, reviewing proposals, uh, contract awards, understanding and facilitating uh, funding streams. Um, I'm sorry, the, the other portion was? The, uh, the, the differences between a board member's role in district oversight and district operations. For, from an oversight perspective, I believe that's more beginning uh, probably policy in terms of um, maybe what is proper conduct, how the superintendent operates uh, and, and, and interacts with the principals, what policies are being driven down into the community. Um, so, so I think there's a, a, a significant divergence between the administration of, of funds and, and more or less the, the legalities of, of administrating building maintenance, uh, funding uh, appropriations uh, versus policy, which is more driven by, I think, uh, more social issues um, and, and maybe community feedback that, that maybe goes a little bit uh, beyond just the administrative role of, of a board member. Sorry, I want to write something. <laughs> Can you please identify the two biggest challenges facing Lake Orion schools and explain how, as a board member, you might propose tackling these challenges? From my perspective, uh, the two biggest challenges that are that are facing the community schools are, uh, unfortunately, not really driven from uh, an administrative or, um, or or policy perspective. Uh, I think it's more or less the in, in, injection of outside uh, variables into the community and into the school district. Um, I think that that can be cultural. I think it can be somewhat divisive. And I think that is one of the, the, the main threats to the fabric of the community, to be honest. Uh, in terms of how to uh, solve that issue, um, it's my belief that trying our best 
to acknowledge that there are differences without trying to show favoritism towards one uh, side or perspective of an agenda is, cru is crucial. Uh, I don't think you can be 100% inclusive without, in some sense, marginalizing some groups and some uh, students or, or, or members of, of a, st a student body. Uh, I think the other major issue facing the school, dish, uh, the Lake Orion Community Schools right now, is the vacancy at the uh, superintendent position. Um, and I would love to see uh, have an opportunity to to help uh, fill that, or have um, opportunity to provide input into. Uh, fulfilling that role as, as, you know, Mr. Kirby has done a tremendous job. I had a, several conversations with him over the phone during the last, during his tenure, um, as my daughter was beginning kindergarten, um, and just encouraging him as he did a, a tremendous job navigating probably the most controversial uh, era that I can imagine as a superintendent. <coughs> Thank you. How would you approach an issue that comes before the board, which is in opposition to your personal views, or your opinion is in the minority among your fellow board members? Um, regarding the um, a minority opi uh, opinion, opinion, opinion or position among the board members, um, I'm very comfortable being in the minority, and I'll still share that view um, and, and still maybe vote as a minority member. Um, I don't think that everything has to be in uh, unanimous uh, consent. Uh, I think uh, sometimes having a, um, an alternative position is, is good and healthy. Uh, so I would be more than willing to, to stand on my position and my, on my ground uh, on any issue. Um, regarding an issue that may be against my personal beliefs, um, our subdivision is pretty diverse, and I'm always eager to seek uh, opinions from outside community members if it's an issue that's already been disclosed to the public uh, to get feedback. Um, I seek counsel with my wife um, to try to make sure that my opinion is not clouding, uh, my personal opinion is not clouding uh, my role as, as a board member um, to make a, a decision that, that, that can otherwise be um, I guess, uh, conflated or, or, or overwritten. So I think maybe trying to find other people to maybe bounce ideas off of. Again, as so long as it's a public issue, it's something that's not a non-disclosure agreement or anything like that, obviously, um, to try to you know seek for different perspectives. Um, I'm always interested in having additional dialogues with other board members to try to understand why they have an opinion, um, and then and why maybe what I'm missing, what gaps do I not see, what logic may maybe failing to uh, apply to understanding a, uh, a decision or a position. Thank you. Board members get information on school issues from a variety of sources. What sources do you believe are the most valuable and appropriate for a board member, and how should this information be used? Uh, well, obviously, if it's um, a, 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 a policy issue, um, something that's black and white legal, uh, obviously, we have legal counsel. I would seek them first and foremost. Um, if it's information regarding any type of contract award, anything that's regarding in the proposal, uh, let's try to remain as, as factual, as, as fact-based as possible without trying to, try to remove as all, all emotion or external variables as possible. Uh, regarding administrative, you know, contract awards, uh, things like that, or any type of legal, you know, uh, decisions. Um, for issues that may be less clear and have much more broad um, inputs and opinions, again, I, I seek uh, feedback from neighbors, from coworkers, from family, from other board members, from if, if I can find, um, you know, I, we do have relationships with other employees of the school district. Um, if, if, again, if it's an issue that doesn't concern them, just to understand what their perspective is. Try to just as, as, as broadly as I can bring in information, um, but it's not going to be something where it's going to be a partisan driven policy where it's uh, uh, one type of, of, of fact or misinformation. Uh, it's, it's really just comes down to balancing what I believe a, a child or, or a student is capable of handling and, and really applying it in those sense. So I, I really trust myself for, for most of those decisions. Thank you. The Board of Education conducts some business during business hours as well as in the evening. 
we also interact with the community and the schools. And equally important, many issues that come before the board to decide and review require time, ability to study all issues, and do the required research prior to the actual board meeting. How do you see yourself managing your time to ensure that you can devote yourself to the responsibilities of a board member? Uh, time management is always uh, a, a fun process, <laughs> whether it's uh, you know uh, personal care, uh, family, um, career. Um, I'm lucky enough where the majority of my my, my work is um, telework. So from the commuting perspective, that gives me I feel like it gives me infinite hours back to my to my day. Um, but um, I, I've never really been a, I've t been able to um, put aside a responsibility just just for the sake of it. If, if the proposal comes through, uh, I'm always going to be eager to read it and review it. Uh, this is something that I take very seriously. Uh, I don't really have much in terms of additional uh, responsibilities outside of my three daughters, but um, for the most part, we're home, and, and that helps a tremendous amount because there's not a lot of distractions. We have downtime in the evening uh, where my wife and I, you know, she's usually doing work anyways, um, and it gives me something to do. Uh, I feel like rather than um, maybe just sitting on the couch, I can, you know, I can, I can read a report, I can read a document, I can read a proposal, uh, I can do research. Um, my wife always makes fun of me because that's those are the types of things I like to do anyway. So I'm always interesting for finding stuff out, and this would maybe focus it on a little bit more uh, useful uh, research. <laughs> LOCS has an operating budget in excess of 105 million, with approximately 7,000 students and 1,000 employees. This requires appropriate oversight by the board. Please tell us about your experience managing financial budgets and human resource issues. Sure. Uh, for my career, uh, I've managed several projects. Um, the most, probably the, the most significant amount of, of funding was a $60 million uh, redesign of our, the Striker vehicle, which is a ground combat vehicle. Uh, the, the, the network that rides within it need to be redesigned. So um, I was charged with the task of, of adjudicating and redesigning that network and over a period of, of five or six years uh, allocating funds both to our GVSC partners uh, for research and development as well as integrating that, that, out, that work output to uh, General Dynamics Land Systems where they actually integrated it onto the platform and incorporated into the production TDP. So uh, managing funds and projects um, is, is pretty much my day-to-day -day task at this point, outside of uh, other smaller jobs associated with, with uh, ground combat vehicles. Excellent, thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me, thank you very much. Uh, is there a closing statement you would like to make as we consider your application? Um, you know, my wife and I have had a long discussion about, um, again, the time uh, required to, to, to um, perform this task. Um, she understands how serious and important this is to me. Um, I've talked to her parents about this who are also members of the Lake Orion community about it. They've been more than excited and, 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 and supportive in terms of encouraging me to, to put in a resume for this position. Um, so it's not just myself that's, that's proposing uh, for, for, that's applying for this position. It's, it's, there's a whole family that's encouraged me. Uh, they see uh, my passion when I discuss public policy um, at the school level and when they see uh, how important it is, um, you know, for little girls, I, my little girls, uh, just now entering the school. Um, if I waited longer, I feel like it'd just be too late and so I feel like this was, this was the right opportunity, this was the right time uh, to at least put my name, my hat in the ring and um, at least, you know, put myself out there. Because as an engineer, sometimes I like to sit in the back of the room uh, to put myself out there and say, hey, I want to participate. I want to be a, a voice of the community, not just a member of the community. Excellent. Well, thank you, <clears throat> excuse me, for your time this evening. I know Julie mentioned um, you 
do not have to stay, and we will we will contact you. So, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you, Scott. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much.
Hello. Hello. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Yes, sir. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, thank you for applying for the Board of Education Vacancy. We have all had the opportunity to review your letter of application and resume and would like to ask you questions regarding your interest in serving as a trustee. To begin, would you please share a brief summary of your involvement with Lake Orion School District and why you are interested in serving as a trustee? Please include specific skills, background, and experiences you would bring to the Board of Education. All right. Excellent question. It's in depth. Uh, so I am... Uh, married to the school district actually <laughs> my wife of 23 years is a first grade teacher here so i've been pretty heavily involved with everything that happens here for the last 20 years or so uh individually uh not a whole lot of involvement other than you know chaperoning uh fifth grade camp and various uh you know field trips and things of that nature outside of my kids ieps and different educational responsibilities uh, I have been in service my entire life. That's just what I do. Uh, it was kind of funny how this came up. It, it happened very organically. This was not uh, a lifelong aspiration of mine. Uh, about two weeks ago, I was having dinner with my sister, and uh, she happens to know Heather. And her and my wife were talking about the school board, and there wasn't a whole lot of interest. And I said, well, well, I'd be interested in it. Uh, so then I started thinking about it uh, and, and asked some questions about the involvement and everything, uh, you know, time investiture. Um, and the more I got to thinking about it, the more I'm like, you know what, this really actually makes a whole lot of sense for me. Um, you know, the reasons that I want to, obviously, I want to advocate for my children, um, but that's very personal thing to me. Um, but I have a lot of unique perspectives. Um, having a son in general education, having a son in special education. Uh, they both just graduated elementary school. Uh, my wife is a teacher. I've got uh, a niece that just graduated Lake Orion High School and a nephew that's in high school currently. And I've been a taxpayer, obviously. So I've got a lot of different perspectives, uh, and I think that's very important. Uh, in my line of work right now, I work in IT. Uh, and that is an adventure. Uh, you have to have a very agile mindset in IT. Uh, and my whole role basically is to fac facilitate things. Uh, we're very big on collaboration. I have to work with various business partners, keep budgets in, in mind, make sure that things come in under cost. I might, I, here's some feedback. I know. I'm not shouting at you. No. <laughs> Okay. A little hot. Yeah. Sorry. As long as it's not giving anybody a headache, I'm good. Um, but uh, I, I am a nonpartisan person, and I understand that this is a nonpartisan thing. Uh, I know, you know, we don't really talk about politics with the school board, but uh, I think it's important to know that I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. I kind of expose myself to the modern Whig philosophy of pragmatism over partisanship, uh, and I can deal with a lot of different people um, and really appreciate their different points of view and bring them together. So uh, I'm a facilitator by nature. I'm very logical. Hopefully that answered your question. Thank you. What do you see as the differences between a board member's role in district oversight and district operations? Well, the district operations should really be the role of the superintendent. Uh, the board, from my understanding, is meant to oversee the superintendent, who handles all of the operational components of it, uh, and really overseeing the budget, where things are spent, uh, and on occasion, uh, coming up with policy. Hello. Hi. Can you identify the two, or not can you, please identify the two biggest challenges facing Lake Orion schools and explain how, as a board member, you might propose tackling these challenges. All right, good question. Uh, I think the the chief one on my mind is the state's budget that is set to be, uh, I think, signed into law or go effective October 1st, where they're cutting the budget for uh, mental health and safety from 300 million down to about 27 million. That is very, very concerning as far as me as a parent and how we're going to uh, continue to have those services available to our students. Um, post-COVID, post, you know, Oxford, uh, there's a lot of mental health challenges facing our students. Uh, it's, it's a very, very large problem. And having those, you know, resource officers in our school is very important as well as, as mental services. Uh, I would advocate strongly that we uh, 
continue to leverage the partnerships that we have as a school district with the Lake Orion Police Department uh, and working with uh, the North Oakland Community Coalition. They just did the, um, the Level Up program from elementary. My kid was in it. They did a phenomenal job, heard nothing but great things. But they offer a lot of, of mental health services. Uh, and then continue to reach out and try to find other organizations like that, maybe some grants that can help offset some of the, uh, uh, the burdens that we would face that are extra. Um, the second thing uh, really is I, I want to find a good superintendent, but that's not really a challenge. Um, and I know you guys have that well in hand. But uh, I think that along with mental health, I think bullying in the high school level is a bit of an issue. Uh, I don't know if that's been brought up to anybody or if they're aware of that, um, but I hear a lot of feedback about that. And I've been very impressed with the way that the elementary education really is all in on uh, teaching these kids to be leaders. Uh, they don't just preach that or, or give them things they, to, to say, hey, you should be a leader. They teach these kids to be leaders. Um, my son, Braden, is autistic, and I, uh, sorry, <laughs> he, uh, he got like a rousing standing ovation. He's so loved in his school. It's just beautiful. And I don't think that carries on into high school. Sorry. <laughs> Love the kids. Thank you. How would you approach an issue that comes before the board, which is in opposition to your personal views, or your opinion is in the minority among your fellow board members? Well, I can't say that anything would really be in opposition to my personal views because I don't really have strong personal views towards anything. I like to look at all of the evidence that's laid out before me and weigh the pros and cons of things. Um, I like to take a logical approach um, in literally everything. Um, drives my wife a little nuts sometimes, but that's me. Um, but if I was advocating for something that was in the minority, uh, healthy dialogue and conversation is important. I got to make sure that everyone gets their thoughts and points across. Uh, and the best thing that I could do is advocate for what I believe in and why. Uh, and if I'm still in the minority, you accept that and move on. Thank you. Good evening. Board members get information on school issues from a variety of sources. What sources do you believe are the most valuable and appropriate for a board member, and how should this information be utilized? That's an interesting question. Um, getting information, uh, you get it from multiple sources, and the more sources you get, I think the better the information. Uh, we are in an era where social media is just out, I'll just say that. Um, I like to have you know, vetted papers and, and articles and, and do research on things. So the news is important, obviously, but factual news and data based off of, you know, if, if there's a law before the, the legislature, you know, actually reading that and understanding that. Uh, the, uh, the, I forget the, the name of it. I, I don't necessarily think it's the MEA, but there are organizations within Michigan um, that explain things and break them down to, to faculty and, and students uh, as well. Um, so I would say get as much information as you possibly can, and then you have to be very careful with what you're disseminating or what you're trying to uh, convey to people because some of that stuff might be privileged. I mean, there's not, you can't just talk about everything openly. Uh, there's some very controversial topics. Uh, I'd like to steer away from those when you can um, in the public eye, but those things still need to be addressed. So uh, really hard question for me to answer because it's so situational. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd gather as much evidence as possible and, and then act on it appropriately. Thank you. The Board of Education conducts some business during business hours as well as in the evening. We also interact with the community and the schools. And equally important, many issues that come before the board to decide and review require time, ability to study all issues, and do the required research prior to the actual board meeting. How do you see yourself managing your time to ensure that you can devote yourself to the responsibilities of a board member? Well, I've got twins, so I've been uh, pretty adept at time management. Uh, my job is very flexible. That helps. Uh, if I need to leave early or take time off, that's never going to be an issue. Uh, and uh, if I need to, to 
spend time uh, studying things at night. I'd gladly let my wife put my children to bed for me, and I would make time to do that. Uh, I don't think time management is is really that big of a challenge as long as my career doesn't you know, overlap or, or get impacted by that, which I don't see that happening. Uh, I've, I'm currently uh, transitioning into a different role at work, which means I'm basically doing two jobs. I was an application support team lead, which basically has a lot to do with, you know, identifying technical bugs and troubleshooting and fixing issues. Um, and now I'm, I'm shifting over into an architecture and application development um, role, which includes you know, throw out a lot of jargon here, so scrum masters and BAs. It's, it's a whole nother world on the development side of things, and uh, I've been able to learn all of that without it impacting anything, and it's, uh, it's, it's fun. I mean, it takes what it takes. Uh, if you have a job to do, you do that job, and when you're dealing with children and the community that you spend the rest of your life in, there's nothing more important, so you make that time investiture. <clears throat> LOCS has an operating budget in excess of $105 million with approximately 7,000 students and 1,000 employees. This requires appropriate oversight by the board. Please tell us about your experience managing financial budgets and human resource issues. Uh, the last 25 years of my life has been human resource issue after human resource <laughs> issue. Being a leader of people, you always have that. Um, that, is, that can range from so many things. Um, you know, conflicts at work that are trivial and, and work-related to very personal items where you, you need to show a lot of empathy. Uh, so that is, is very simple. Uh, you are always on stage no matter where you are, so you always have to conduct yourself with a certain amount of decorum there. Uh, as far as managing budgets, uh, I have never uh, had to fully be responsible for managing a budget. Uh, I have worked on several projects where budgets were primary concern. You have to do certain things with a limited amount of resources and make that work. Uh, you know, throwing people at a problem is never the answer, nor is throwing extra money at it because nobody's got extra money, so you have to figure it out. Um, I, I do not have the experience there, um, but it's uh, something that obviously I'd be willing to, to learn, and I don't see it varying greatly from having to, you know, put forth a project uh, with a certain amount of funds. Excellent. Thank you. Um, well, thank you very much for your time. Is there a closing statement you would like to make as we consider your application? Um, no, I just want to thank you guys for the opportunity, and I want to say that uh, thus far you've all been doing a, a phenomenal job. Uh, my students, my children, uh, their journey through elementary school has been phenomenal. Uh, the paras have been wonderful. They go to Blanche Sims if you're curious, so, you know, go Ken. Um, but uh, I, I really love what we've built here, and uh, I'd like to see that continue. So whether I'm the candidate you choose or not, uh, you know, I'm going to continue to support my community, and uh, thanks for your time. Thank you so much for Thanks being here tonight. We appreciate it. Hide in the back now. <laughs>
got all of our little. And we're live. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Thank you for applying for the Board of Education vacancy. We have all had the opportunity to review your letter of application and resume and would like to ask you questions regarding your interest in serving as a trustee. To begin, would you please share a brief summary of your involvement with Lake Orion School District and why you're interested in serving as a trustee? Please include specific skills, background, and experiences uh, you would bring to the Board of Education. Certainly, so my involvement with the district is um, twofold. So I have a 12-year-old uh, stepson who is currently at Oakview, uh, graduate of Blanche Sims. And uh, so you mentioned getting ready to go into the eighth grade. So that's um, uh, my current status. Um, as far as you know, you mentioned about experience and, and all these other things. So I think the best experience I can bring to the table is I'm a father of five. <laughs> so, and so what really has me passionate about this, and I, I'll get to the, uh, my involvement with the district, is that on the one end of the spectrum, I have a one-year-old daughter who, just as Aiden is my 12-year-old stepson, just as he's going to be uh, um, graduating from Lake Orion High School, she'll be entering Blanche Sims. So I'm like, these next 10 years to me are super um, critical. And so um, with that being said, yes, you know, being involved with my uh, stepson at Oakview and just really um, being uh, awakened to the to the incredibleness of this district. I mean, just how how uh, how tremendous this community is. So I'm actually newer to the community. So I'm actually from Rochester Hills, uh, born and raised. Uh, and then about four years ago, my wife and I, my wife and I decided to move to uh, Lake Orion. Actually, oddly enough, March of 2020. So right as the I literally two weeks before everything shut down is when we moved in. So um, but irrespective, that wasn't. Um, impediment to us getting to know this great community, um, uh, meeting great neighbors, being out on the lake, uh, then at the ensuing fall, um, at really just a very tumultuous time, no less, because they didn't do um, in-person school. Aiden, had to, Aiden started up at Blanche Sims. Uh, and so really just seeing how well the district handled it, there was a lot of conflicts. I certainly, we were, we were um, issues that were thrown at them. And so uh, I just loved being a part of that, you know, um, growth. I thought that my I thought that he came through the pandemic better, and I really attribute that to the district. And so you know, again, attending so he actually plays football, wrestling, um, attending those games, um, uh, he, he taking him to the high school games, just really you know soaking up this community and really realizing how amazing it is. Um, you know, to tie it back, that's really what what sparked my interest in wanting to be a part of this district. And then take a take a step back. So, as mentioned, I have five children. So the spectrum is is, is quite vast. I'll be uh, it, it, you're going to love this story. So, as mentioned, I have a one year old daughter, 14 months actually, and uh, and then my stepson Aiden is 12, and then my oldest son is actually 29 years old. Uh, he is a product of public schools. Actually, all my children are. He graduated from Rochester High School. Uh, went on to graduate from Michigan State University, which is my alma mater as well. And he's now working as a software engineer in Tokyo, Tokyo, Japan. Um, and so where I'm going with this is that he's also a, a, a product of public schools, um, you know, both at the collegiate level and the, and the you know, K through 12. I mean, I mean, Michigan State, of course, is, comes at a fee, but it is still a public university. And really just seeing the incredible uh, talent that this community produces and you know, I'm in a position in my life where I'm ready to, to be a part of helping to shape that talent in some way, shape, or form. I'm not a teacher, you know, uh, uh, don't have those credentials, if you will, but I do have other skill sets, and I think you asked about that. So skill sets that I bring to the table, again, just being a, um, a, f a father uh, who's been through this, you know, uh, um, uh, the, the ups and downs, obviously gone through the pandemic, and just other issues, you know, I'll relate it. I, my oldest son was actually a first grader when 9-11 occurred, the day. I'll never forget leaving work. And I think we were all, if those who remember, it was a very, you know, um, you know, difficult day for all of us. I, we didn't know what was going to happen, similar to the pandemic, although that was one day compressed where the pandemic was elongated. But I went, remember picking him up from school and just like, you know, just every, a lot of parents did the same thing, taking home early. And then fast forward, you know, nearly 20 years and having to go through almost the same experience and just seeing that, you know, thinking to myself that, the way that the way the schools and the way the community handles these issues will have a tremendously lasting effect on the children above beyond, you know, what what happened in the first grade or something like that. Even my son to this day talks about, 
you know, even they, they didn't know what was happening. They heard drips and drips, talk about 9-11, drips and drops of, of info, but they didn't know what that meant. And so, you know, he even mentioned about how well it was handled and how that did, 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 it did have a, an impact on him. So, uh, yeah, I think it just kind of like talks about, you know, uh, I just want to make sure I covered all those bases. Did I answer, did I fail to answer a question? Oh. Thank you. What do you see as the differences between a board member's role in district oversight and district operations? Well, I think the the role in the district's the uh, uh, board member versus operations is is first and foremost that I well, obviously you're an elected official or in this case obviously you'd be an appointed official, but um, I do think that you have uh, um, a certain you, you're, um, well for starters obviously you're you're um, you know different in the sense that you're. Certainly, here on the passion of you know, for passion. I mean, I you know I don't think the salaries are large or anything like that, or even it is it is something you're doing extra. So, um, you certainly have a different uh, um, yeah, perspective. Secondly, I do think you have a different connection to the community if, um, because obviously you rely on them to to keep you in this position, which requires uh, a board member to really be involved. Um, I understand that as a board member, you're appointed to different schools and your liaisons and things of that nature. But I also think it's uh, it's important to to be out in the community. Uh, um, um, you know, at, again, I bring it back to football, especially this past season with the, how great the team did. But all the you know other events, softball events, track events, um, just um, interfacing with the community um, outside of this 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 venue. Um, and then, but secondly, the operational staff, not that they don't have, certainly, of course, they're, they wouldn't be at this community, and I think you can um, have an affinity and become passionate, but, you know, it's not a requirement to live here, to the best of my knowledge. You can be an operational employee and not have to live here, whereas, obviously, a requirement to be on this board, you have to be in the, you have to be in the district. So I think um, uh, uh, we, we certainly, you certainly bring a different perspective, and you have a different responsibility um, to the community, if you will. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Identify the two biggest challenges facing Lake Orion schools and explain how, as a board member, you might propose tackling these challenges. Well, I think obviously the the, uh, the search for the uh, uh, superintendent is a, is, a, is a massive issue. I mean, that's, that's the uh, critical part of this team. Um, I'll start with that one. So... Um, I've one of um, one of my um, uh, uh, professions is I'm actually an IT consultant, information technology, um, and and pretty much in any business, the one thing I've learned, IT may actually be the business. Meaning that what I what I take a step back, one of the, my key jobs is that I provide or one of the key functions that I provide. Um, Assessments. A business will hire us and come in and say, "Please tell us what's going on. What's up? What's down? What's left? What's right?" They don't know. Often, you often appended to an acquisition. A company's buying another company. They want to know. The, they want to know what's going on. So, every single time we do these assessments, that transcends to the business. It doesn't. It isn't just like how many technical employees they have and and what's the current uh, what's what are the current tech projects. Things like. Um, how many how many software licenses you have? Obviously, you may all have laptops. There's Office. There's there's all these different applications that are involved that are come at a fee at a cost, and oftentimes those get overlooked. Those are business costs, and those are things that we have to you know present to the to the to, to the uh, organizations that hire us to do this. So where I'm coming with this is that I've really learned how to do these assessments quite well, um, uh, and I think in the same it's it bring it to the search of the uh, of the of the superintendent. It is in in all for all intents and purposes a very business driven decision. Obviously. Uh, a number of factors you're taking into account, um, but you're assessing, you're analyzing, and you're coming to a conclusion, and that's something that I've, uh, I do for a living. Uh, even, in fact, I have, you know, templates on how to do these types of things, you know, sort of, uh, you know, Deloitte, if you're familiar with, you know, Deloitte as a, as a consulting company. I have those types of assessments ready at the ready to do just things, because as mentioned, one of my jobs is just to understand how things transcend. Um, how far the tentacles go. Secondly, um, I do do my best to try and keep stay involved um, uh, with the uh, um, um, with the with the current events as best I can. So I understand there there is a, um, an issue with the order of priority for bond projects. 
Um, and you know, again, one of the things as a business, as also as a uh, as an IT consultant, as a business owner, I actually owned several businesses on, as well. Um, you know, prioritizing budgets is a major part of what I do. Uh, uh, I mean, it's 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 super critical. So I would, in my mind, those are the you know, to the, as I'm following things along, I think the the board, uh, I'm sorry, the superintendent selection, and and then this. Um, Issue with the priority of of, of of bond projects, you know, and uh, you know, with being, uh, I think it was a three million dollars over budget. Um, I, I perceive those as being two major issues. So, thank you. Absolutely. Good evening. Good evening. How would you approach an issue that comes before the board, which is in opposition to your personal views, or your opinion is in the minority among your fellow board members? I'm sorry. So. Uh, uh, could you repeat that again? Sure. How would you approach an issue that comes before the board, mm -hmm. which is in opposition to your personal views, or your opinion is in the minority among your fellow board members? Oh, how would I approach that? Um, well, I think if you ever talk to anybody who's who's familiar with me, um, you'll I think the number one thing you'll you'll get you'll get back from them is that Mark is, is keeps an even keel. Um, for uh, actually, my wife jests that she doesn't know for better or for worse. She doesn't know if I'm happy or I'm sad. <laughs> and so it's just my nature. But I think what, that transcends to this because I certainly am excel at um, at uh, being open-minded uh, about all things. Um, uh, I think it's it's imp uh, and I've really made my my bones that way. You know, um, you know, being. Uh, um, um, able to hear all points of it, have a, have, a dis, have a different opinion, but be able to articulate it in a calm and collective manner. And I'll bring it, I'll, I'll relate it to you. As mentioned to you, I grew up in Rochester Hills, Michigan. Um, I'm a person of color. It wasn't easy, I'll be perfectly honest. And so I was constantly, you know, in, in, a, in a position where um, uh, differing opinions about, about, about race and culture and ethnicity were, were brought up uh, across, uh, all formats in school, uh, uh, and, you know, and so I always uh, prided myself in, in really being um, uh, um, um, able to not let not let emotion take over, and really just you know be able to talk to people or understand with well, what perspective they may have. And so it's actually something that uh, um, I'm quite proud of because. Uh, I think it's a family trait because actually my younger brother John Paul Torres, he's actually uh, on the Waterford School mm -hmm. District, um, mm -hmm. and he he has a you know has a similar temperament as myself, and he's lasted there for oh my God 14 years I can't believe it 2010 I can't remember just like yesterday we were out there knocking on doors for him, and so it's sort of a and so he's also you know talked to me about the it's a great question you bring up because he said that is actually a, a massive issue for him because you know in his community there he he often there their conflicts are are, are a big part of uh, are not a, are, are a part of what is done here and so being able to navigate that and and um, um, and address issues professionally is paramount and I as mentioned I think that's one of my probably my greatest talents is something that I've, I've uh, take pride in so. thank you you're welcome good evening good evening board members get information on school issues from a variety of sources what sources do you believe are the most valuable and appropriate for a board member and how should this information be utilized? Uh, well, a variety of sources. Well, um, I would obviously place uh, a premium on the infor internal information that's 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 aggregated, um, uh, whether it's through committee or whether it's through outside consultants. Um, I am also. Um, um, I know I mentioned I'm passionate about, I'm passionate about a lot of things, but this is something that I am super passionate about. <laughs> so actually my bachelor's degree is in journalism. So uh, once upon a time I actually wanted to be a newspaper writer and I'll, I'm gonna be, be, gonna be blunt and I graduated from college. As mentioned, I, had a, I actually already had a young family and I saw what the pay was and I'm like, okay, I might need to pick a different line of work because you know I have the mouths to feed and those starting jobs are a little rough. So. Um, so that being said, I do, um, I, I'm an avid reader of, of, of the, uh, of Lake Oregon Review. Um, I still believe in local journalism. Uh, I think it's a critical component to our community. Um, and what's actually interesting about the Lake Oregon Review is that, uh, and so again, to me, it's, it's, uh, um, it's 
one of the things I've always loved about n newspapers in general prior to the social media age was the uh, opinions, the, le the letters to the editor that any of us could write in and have an opinion. And well, nowadays you can just do it on Facebook and, you know, and it's the same thing. But I, I felt like I always put a higher premium on the letters to the editor, and I still do because it takes a lot more work to do that, you know what I'm saying, whereas it just whip out your phone and give your vent and then, and then and let it be. And so I, st I still, I loved to read the review and, and get the pulse of the community across a number of topics, whether it's a zoning issue or a village issue or the district, the school district issue. Um, uh, and so I, I, I view that as a source of, 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 of information. Um, but I also, it, with like everything, you know, as mentioned, you know, in, in information technology, I think everything with a grain of salt as well. So I, you know, I think our jobs, or, you know, the jobs of the board is to, is to distill and, and come to your own conclusions based on what the information you have. You know, whether you have background or you have facts, you have, you have uh, uh, experience, um, uh, consultations, individuals you talk to who, give you, who can give you additional info. Um, uh, perhaps you, t you talk to, the dis to uh, district personnel as well. I think that's super important, and I think that could be a source of information. But again, take that with a grain of salt. You know, the key is to really, and I kind of bring that back to my journalism days, your job, your, uh, the job of a newspaper reporter uh, 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 is to capture the facts and present them, not to have an opinion. That's, a, that's an, a columnist. And I think people, you know, being a newspaper geek, I, I get, you know, geeky about that. You know, columnists will write an opinion and say, I think this, I think that. They don't need facts. They're, it's, it's, you know, they, they do whatever they want. But a, a true reporter journalist, their role, and again, it's something that I think to me is sacred, is to capture the information assess it, distill it um, with advice from experts. You know, if you're, if you're reporting on, on, a, on a bond issue, maybe you bring in a, 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 per, a financial expert to give you more information, and then you present it in that nature, and then, and, then, and then you let the reader discern from that. So I think that's one way I, that I think it's important to capture information from all sources and really apply your own logic to, to, the, to the validity of it, the weight of it, and then come to your own conclusions. Thank you. Absolutely. The Board of Education conducts some business during business hours as well as in the evening. We also interact with the community and the schools. And equally important, many issues that come before the board to decide and review require time, ability to study all issues, and do the required research prior to the actual board meeting. How do you see yourself managing your time to ensure that you can devote yourself to the responsibilities of a board member? Well, thank you. That's a great question. And I've actually had this conversation with my, fam with my family and my wife uh, more specifically about just sort of the, the, the level of involvement that's required. Um, they're all on board. Um, so from a, from a, you know, a daily, day-to-day -day perspective, um, I am my own boss. So I, I, I'm beholden to customers. I'm beholden to clients. I got to pay my bills, of course. But I can always make arrangements to be available, uh, and I do just that. You know, even for my children, uh, whether it's volunteering for field day, uh, or, or you know, book reading day, or something like that, I will certainly always, you know, uh, um, you know, I always make myself available, and I can do the same here. And as you know, as mentioned, um, when this opportunity arose, I saw it, and I and I submitted my candidacy for it. I certainly had a conversation with my brother as well, and you know, just to make sure I got a level set of the, you know, of, of what's involved. And it is truly, a, it is truly a, a passion project. Uh, I mean, I think you I'm preaching the choir here, but you, you're here because you're passionate, and it is going to take time from you. And the, the key, I think, you know, as my as, as my brother explains, he, you know. He's done a great job of weaving the family into it, you know, whether it's because his daughter is, is a, he's got a young daughter who's at the, in the district. He brings her to events uh, or he brings his wife to certain events or, or things of that nature. Or um, even if he's uh, presiding over the, th you know, uh, the three different uh, uh, um, um, graduation ceremonies that they recently had, um, you know, he, he brings his wife and daughter along or at least his daughter. And that's actually a great uh, inspiration to, to her, I think, you know, and I think that's a great thing too, like to, you know, uh, it's, it's visualization, you know, I want to, I can't wait, I can't wait to bring my daughter to events, you know, she, she's old enough so she can visualize um, um, what it's, you know, yeah, I can be that, that young woman walking across the stage in that, you know, regal, you know, cap and gown. And so I think as a board member, you can find a way to obviously, you know, you know, merge those the most. But yes, I'm certainly up for the task. Thank you. <clears throat> LOCS has an operating budget in excess of 105 million with approximately 7,000 students and 1,000 employees. This requires appropriate oversight by the board. Please tell us about your experience managing financial budgets and human resource issues. 
Uh, certainly. So, start with the with the budget. So, um, I don't preside over budgets that large. Um, as mentioned, as a consultant, though, it is my job to work with companies that preside over budgets much larger than that and helping them figure out the best way to manage that budget. Um, you know, identify uh, – uh, one of the things I love doing is identifying um, um, inefficiencies in a business. As mentioned, bring it to IT. Uh, you got X amount of employees, personnel, um, and yet you've got these many licenses. You're paying way more. Let's, let's figure out a way to get rid of those uh, or, or, you know, or vice versa or how to reuse, repurpose some hardware or something like that. So, you know, helping a business manage their budget is, is uh, one thing I do for a living. Secondly, I quite frankly, um, when it comes to those, those scenarios, I lean on my wife a lot. So I use her as a free consultant and we can do the same here. So my wife is actually in a, in a senior role at Amazon. Um, uh, her home off her she works their, her boss is in Seattle but she's here here in Lake Orion works from home and she presides over uh, let's put, I'll put it in perspective she's um, her job is to autonomize every single warehouse uh, in the world um, so you can imagine you know they're they're, they're trying to transition away from uh, um, um, the gas driven um, vehicles or if you're familiar with now Amazon's got these uh, you know electric vehicles uh, she's the one putting all those chargers in the facilities globally so they can plug in or uh, uh, um, or there are part of her one of her um, her mandates is she's uh, working to, to make uh, Amazon carbon neutral by the year 2035 or something like that. And anyhow, where I'm going with this is that she, re she presides over billion dollar budgets. And so when I present to her a challenge that I'm faced with with a, with a client, you know, uh, and keep it high level, she helps walk me through, talk me through what, what, how she would do that. And uh, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I don't think there's you know, any taking that advice or taking that consultation. Uh, but no, I certainly understand that this this is an enterprise. Let's be honest. I mean, it's a it's a massive enterprise with you know um, uh, a lot of moving parts. Uh, a, a much is at stake, and really, um, you know, I, I I like to you know kind of bring it back to what I do for a living. You know, if 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 I help a if I help a business or or we or right or we screw something up and maybe we get the license issue wrong or we you know maybe we're building a software for them and it doesn't launch on the day they expect. Well, it, it, nobody, nobody got hurt. Nobody died. You know, we'll explain it. We'll deal with it. Move on. But I think at this level, we are dealing with we are dealing with very, very, very um, uh, critical issues. You know, there's our children. I mean, every day I send my child off to school. I watch him take him to the bus stop. I watch him get on the bus, and I see him leave. And then when it, now he's older, he walks from the bus stop. But when he wasn't, you know, I would show up and I watch him get off, and we would talk about his day. And it's you know. Um, we, the district, if we're the stewards of, 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 of the goal of this community. So obviously um, managing it, you know, the managing the business correctly is, 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 is uh, it is super paramount. And then secondly, managing personnel. Yes, I have an experience with that. I do have a team under me. Um, I do, under, I'm familiar with sort of the intricacies of dealing with, with uh, personnel, hiring, firing, HR issues, and things of that nature. So. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> My goodness. In closing, is there a closing statement you would like to make as we consider your application? Uh, certainly. So, uh, you know, I, I really want to bring home the, um, the, 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 the skill sets that I'll bring. Um, uh, you know, I'll enumerate them. I think just being a father of five who's been, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of thought about this morning. I've had a child in public schools since the year 2000, nonstop. It's been for it's been quite amazing to see how the world has changed, um, and uh, uh, you know I, I bring home to my oldest son when he went to Michigan State, um, uh, and I had I had preceded him by twenty some odd years. It changed the, dramatically the campus did Michigan State, and I'll explain. He's competing against the world. Uh, the, the the foreign student population at Michigan State is 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 quite quite drastic now, and back in, back in my day it was pretty much non-existent, and so where I'm going with this is that and he hung with them. He, as mentioned, he lives in he he had to be hired by a company to go work in Tokyo because they couldn't find anybody to do that to do to that was smart enough. Let's be I'll be perfectly honest, and so um, I think that there's 
tremendous challenges facing our children these next these next few years. I, I'm, I'm being perfectly honest. I see it. I see it as mentioned. You know, I, as as it, you know, because I deal with so many businesses, different businesses on a regular basis. Um, you know, as, as you know, as you know, constantly talking through this with my wife and and the evolution of things. And so, I really want to be a part and bring the skill set that I have to make this district the best, so that our our students are competing globally, so that our students are. Are, are the envy of the world. Why not? I really feel like we can get there. We have the resources. Um, um, uh, we are in a world-class community. Um, I mean, this, this, this community is a gem. Uh, and so I really want to bring that experience that I have globally. Uh, you know, I've, I've traveled to many countries for business. Uh, I'm fluent in Spanish. Um, uh, I, I have, you know, I, I have a lot of experience that I want to bring that, and just that, again, that fatherly experience, that parental experience that I want to bring, bring and just really make us the best ever. Secondly, is mentioned, you know, I really made my bones, I made my living, this is how I feed my family, by helping, helping businesses be better and efficient. You know, as mentioned, we come in, we're asked to help with their IT situation, and lo and behold, they find out IT is 80% of their everything. It's, it's taking all their money and it's taking all their resources and all their employees and, and the time wasted, their, the time their employees waste with, with IT inefficiencies. And so I would like to bring that skill set here as well. Uh, and again, I'm not, I, I know I'm not hired to be the consultant, but it certainly can bring that, if we do bring in consultants or if we're working with consultants or I wanna bring that, uh, 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 that talent uh, that I have and that, that, not, that experience that I have, you know, there's always that old adage, you know, um, you know, I think we're all, we've all done this before. You know, somebody asks you to do something, you know, and you, you can do it in five minutes. And then they're like, and, and, and maybe if you're paid by the hour, they're like, hey, it only took you five minutes. And it's like, yeah, it took me five minutes, but it took me 25 years to learn how to do that in five minutes. You know, how many, how many time, how many nights was I up late learning how to do that uh, on my own dime to get to the point where I'm super efficient and I can do these things fast? And I think, um, uh, I think that's important here as well, whereas that, you know, I'll be bringing that, uh, that experience. And then, you know, lastly, um, I think the, the one thing that I really, uh, you know, want to uh, um, bring home is that um, I've, I've got skins in the game. I, I, I mentioned, you know, I look at my one-year-old daughter and I really, you know, my wife and I have put our roots here. Uh, we were not leaving anytime soon. And I want to see her be a part of a, of a world-class experience uh, and I do think it can happen here. You know, the, the, I just live, I live uh, um, Pain Creek Ridge, just a few blocks from here. Um, uh, and so it's just, uh, uh, you know, our, our, I really, and, I, and then also I want to see, you know, uh, my son Aiden, you know, he's got, he's, he's talking about wanting to go to Ivy League schools. I'm, I'm telling him no reason. No, and not, not, I mean, another problem, the other issue, not problem, but is that Ivy League schools cost money. Guess what? You can kick butt here. They'll pay you to come. Like you can do that, and and um, I think Lake Orion makes those things possible. And in fact, if when, when we when I read the review, I talk about that again, and they they highlight the student of the week. I'll 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 bring them in. I'll say, hey, look at look at this kid, or look at this this uh, you know they they got a four four point two five. You know, you thought a 4.0 was, was awesome. They got a 4.25, and guess look where they're going. They're going to Michigan or something like that. You can do they're, – they're, they're at Lake Orion High School, you know, and you'll be there in, in a year. He's going to eighth grade another year. You can be with them. And I think that that sort of, um, uh, you know, as mentioned, I, that, that the skin, the, the skins in the game that I have are really driving factors to me. It will push me to be the best um, um, uh, at this role as possible. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank you. Um, and uh, I'm sure Julie told you, you don't have to stay. <laughs> and uh, thank you. Uh, okay, thank you all. I appreciate it. Uh, um, and uh, I hope everybody's basements are dry. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> I'm with you, man. I got a little bit of seepage. And I live across the street from you. Uh, <laughs> I got some, uh, got my shop bag going. So, uh, But I'm calling somebody in the morning. So, Well, thank you, everyone. Do appreciate it.
Nope. She's, we're good. <laughs> good evening. Thank you for applying for the Board of Education vacancy. We have all had the opportunity to review your letter of application and resume and would like to ask you questions regarding your interest in serving as a trustee. To begin, would you please share a brief summary of your involvement with the Lake Orion School District and why you're interested in serving as a trustee? Please include specific skills, background, and experiences you bring to the Board of Education. Well, well good evening, everyone. Um, my name's Jeff Faber. I, I worked for the district for 25 years um, as a teacher at various buildings. Carpenter is where I started. Eventually, I was carpenter in Pine Tree when it was in elementary. And then I eventually moved over to Oakview. Um, I just retired. It's been a month off, and now I'm like, oh, I got to get back, back in action. It's been my idle hands can't handle it. Um, I, I've had five kids in the district. Only one currently still there. He's entering Walden uh, this upcoming school year. We just had a band camp today, so he was he's been working on the trombone. Um, so it's been a beautiful background sound at home. Um, so. Uh, uh, my wife is a teacher, um, a classroom teacher at Carpenter. She teaches uh, DK. She's been around. Um, I, I never wanted to say how many years she's been around, but it's it's far fewer than me. <laughs> so uh, yes, yes, that's my um, my experience. Oh yes, I also was a union president for 12 years, um, and and got a lot of experience, a lot of background information about the district. Um, which I'm sure will come up in future questions about, you know, to what extent um, I, I know about some of the things and, and, and how things work in a public school district or a public entity. Thank you. What do you see as the differences between a board member's role in district oversight and district operations? It would be very tempting for someone without board experience to think, hey, I'm just like an executive level and I can boss people around. Like I am, I am like beyond the management. I tell them what to do. And that's not the role of the board as, as you all well know. Um, I think of the board as being the eyes, the ears and the mouth of the community, but not, not the boss of what happens in individual situations. Um, the three components of the board, you're real, missions are to set the policy, employ the superintendent, and approve the budget. So you have one employee, and that's the superintendent. The rest are just supposed to be hands off. So yeah, that's an important, a very critical um, role is hiring that superintendent. Um, but yes, the yearly approval of the budget's huge, and there's a lot of conversation that goes into that. And, and policy, of course, as well, which is regularly um, discussed at each meeting. The best component of oversight is just asking questions in a lot of cases. Why, how, you know, just, just getting an explanation from the, the people involved in those decisions and, uh, and probing things further as needed. Identify the two biggest challenges facing Lake Orion schools and explain how, as a board member, you might propose tackling these challenges. Well, the, the, big, the big thing since I've been involved is funding is always number one where there's money, it appears to be money, but sometimes it's passed through money. Always there's strings attached. So it's not, it's never as simple as it seems. So continuing to advocate for steady funding where local control, these are things that are, I believe in as a principle anyway that, that this, this board should have a lot more ability to make these decisions without the state or the federal government telling you how to do it. So that's, that's number one thing is, is the constant money game. And I saw a big part of that in the union world and from attending meetings for over a decade or 15 years, I don't know, it's been a long time. I lose track, it's been so long. But attending meetings with you, but in the audience, um, just a constant discussion about uh, the MIPSERs, contribution rates, and things like this, where it seems like they're giving the schools more money, but we're just sending them the check right back, and it's frustrating. And that's one thing, I'm a big advocate, uh, public advocate of things, and, and speaking out on, on how that's wrong. Um, so that's, the, the funding piece is one. Um, the second piece is the 
which is another very fluid thing, which is our enrollment. Our enrollment, which was very high at one time and has dipped, and we've used school of choice to maintain. But what is our real number? How does it match up with the number of people employed? Like, how do we, how do we blend this all? Because we need, I mean, I hate to sound like an airline guy, but bodies in the seats to pay the bills. And it has to be this very fine balance. To maintain these programs, we need the bodies. So we need to maintain the programs, the vicious cycle. If we don't have the great programs, we start to lose people to our competitors, which are surrounding districts. Um, but at what cost? So we have to, have to keep that balance in mind always, and that's a challenge I know that the board has, has dealt with for many years as well. Good evening. How would you approach an issue that comes before the board, which is in opposition to your personal views, or your opinion is in the minority among your fellow board members? Well, I'm, I'm very creative, so a lot of times I do have a different viewpoint of others, but I'm not the type to like knock their idea down. In fact, I'm a natural like compromise guy, natural smoother. Sometimes I'm Pollyanna-ish, where I'm like, oh, it's, it's good this way too. And um, so trying to learn why, why someone would have that other opinion, that's what I want to know. Because sometimes, I'll admit, sometimes I didn't hear the whole story. I don't know all the details. And, and maybe there is something more to it that I'm missing. So that's what I'd really want to learn. I'd want them to help me figure it out. And, uh, and it's, yeah, it's just like... Uh, I've had this a lot in life where I'm, I'm not always in total agreement with things, but I do it. I mean, I saw it from the union side. I've been a reserve police officer for 22 years. I've had a lot of situations where I don't necessarily agree with things, but we enforce it. That's the law. Like things like this where I'm like, oh, the situation's a little gray, but, but it's not. And so, so sometimes, um, yes, I mean, I... I recognize that uh, my way is not the only way. Thank you. Good evening. Hi. Board members get information on school issues from a variety of sources. What sources do you believe are the most valuable and appropriate for a board member, and how should this information be utilized? Well, your fellow board members are one, one big thing, um, because a lot of times you have different backgrounds and different experiences. so. Like you could have someone who's a financial genius like Mr. Singer over there or, or, or Birgit, Ms. McQuiston with MESP experience and speaking of which is a great resource. I, was, I visited their website um, in previous days checking it out, all that's on there and it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of answers out there. I have, I'm actually friends with a few board members in other communities so that could be somebody to, to bounce ideas off of. And I told them they were crazy when they got the job, by the way, just for full disclosure. I said, what are you doing? Um, but um, also, I mean, obviously, the stakeholders, the, the parents and community members could have some, some real insight on some issues. Um, the staff, of course, they're living it every day. They're seeing things firsthand. It can tell you, hey, this thing's broken. We need to fix it. Like, you don't always know until somebody says something, right? And then you're like, wow, how long has it gone on? And, and just helping them figure out where to go to help the problem. Because a lot of times it's not you, but hey, you need to talk through it with this chain of command, for lack of better words. And uh, finally, even the, even the students, uh, when appropriate, uh, talking to them. I mean, sometimes the, I mean, yeah, you might not ask a kindergartner, what do you think of school lunch? They might be like, oh, it's gross. Uh, but but a high school student might have some very insightful things they could share um, about their experience. Thank you. You're welcome. The Board of Education conducts some business during business hours as well as in the evening. We also interact with the community and the schools. And equally important, many issues that come before the board to decide and review require time, ability to study all issues and do the required research prior to the actual board meeting. How do you see yourself managing your time to ensure that you can devote yourself to the responsibilities of a board member? Well, 
Well, that's really easy. I'm I'm retired. I've got all the time in the world. So, <laughs> no, I I uh, I've uh, done a lot of after hours things for years. I've always I'm like one of the one of the few teachers. I hope this is in public that always despise summer break so, because I was like, oh, it's too boring. I need more more things to do. So, I spend my evening hours with a variety of activities with friends. Sports, hobbies like Dungeons and Dragons, and uh, and many other vocations, and with my family. So I'm used to waking up early and staying up late, and uh, and uh, just being very involved um, without a time clock. I, I I'm willing to do weekends and nights, and and understand the commitment to the job. And really, my union job was a lot like that, where. It was a feeling of a 24-7, a 365-day where people would have um, situations and trying to help them um, the, to the best of my ability throughout the year at any times. And the police job is like it where they might call you in and say, hey, we, we're short. We're short staffing. We need you to transport a prisoner. And you're like, oh, all right. So, yeah, I'm, I'm used to it. Awesome. LOCS has an operating budget in excess of $105 million with approximately 7,000 students and 1,000 employees. This requires appropriate oversight by the board. Please tell us about your experience managing financial budgets and human resource issues. Well, I've never worked with a budget of this size. Um, my household budget's a little bit different. And... Uh, it, um, I have done like association budget where it's like a third party budget like that where it's an organization. But um, so yeah, I don't have tons of financial background to this level. So I would definitely rely on uh, Mrs. Curtis in, in the audience here uh, asking her a lot of questions, you know, formulating questions on my own really. And then, and then going to her and saying, hey, can you explain some of these things? And uh, because that is, that is something I, I think of a, a school board, and I, I mean, I've lived my life like this, that you're building a team and you want people with different talents. And yeah, the finance side would be, I'd be like in the top seven on the board on <laughs> finance ability, but maybe not much higher. Uh, I mean, it, it is something that I'm interested in. I've worked through on the, on the union side, learning a lot about it. But yeah, I mean, that's something I don't walk in with tons of experience on. I do have other other virtues that I could bring to the board, but maybe not that one. The HR side is another story. Of course, I worked extremely close with HR, with staffing, with these sorts of things. I mean, that's hand in hand. The union and, and HR has worked very closely. I worked for like five different HR people when I, when I was an employee and, and learned a lot from each of them and just some of the difficult decisions that are involved and and the constant moving parts that'll happen throughout the summer. So I, I do have a lot of experience with that side of things. And I know that each body, I, I'm not so bad that I look at a fellow employees as a dollar sign, but I kind of did sometimes during bargaining where I'd be like, oh my gosh, we got a lot of bodies. Thank you. Is there a closing statement you would like to make as we consider your application? Oh gosh, um, there's so much to say. Uh, well, I, I will be brief. Um, so, so thank you for your service, uh, as always. Like a, a truly thankless job, as as I've mentioned in the past. You get a lot of feedback. Most of it, not so nice. But you're doing an important role, and and uh, I think I could bring something to this team. Um, I've had a lifetime of public service, and would love for this to be part of my next chapter um, going forward. So. So thank you for the time, and um, and I'm planning to run for the two-year seat either way. So, so you can count on on me on the ballot. I've already got like three signatures. But, uh, <laughs> I just started. I started a few few minutes ago. But, uh, I know lots of people. <laughs> Excellent. Well, right. thank you for your time this evening. We greatly appreciate it. All right. And like I said, you're free to stay as always. Or. Uh, I, I better run. I don't want to, okay. you know, like, uh, yeah, yeah. So have a great night, everyone. Thank Thanks you. Sure. Thank you, Jeff.
<laughs> it's a fantastic. Who are you? I need to go right? tonight on a long day. So you can go either direction you want. I'm gonna okay. do it like this. Okay. You do however you gotta do it. <laughs> I'm just my mental brain is. It's okay, I'm with you. It's I am having a moment as well. Gentlemen, ladies. Hello. Hello. Those in the audience. I'm about ready. <laughs> Good evening. Thank you for applying for the Board of Education vacancy. We have, uh, sorry, we have all had the opportunity to review your letter of application and resume and would like to ask you questions regarding your interest in serving as trustee. To begin, would you please share a brief summary of your involvement with the Lake Orion School District and why you're interested in serving as a trustee? Please include specific skills, background, and experiences you would bring to the Board of Education. Oh, my name is Scott Horning. Um, moved to Lake Orion in 2002. My daughter went through the Lake Orion schools. Her name is Nina Horning. She uh, won the record. I think she holds the record in volleyball for most points scored right now. <clears throat> and she's in a scholarship for uh, in the University of Cincinnati. I'm a, I'm a combat veteran. I got 24 years in the National Guard. I have worked um, cross-culturally and cross-functionally with large budgets, I delivered, you know, on the military side, I delivered $753 million of foreign military sales. I worked as a contracting officer, so <clears throat> I've worked with some big budget items. I've worked with interpreters in Iraq. Um, I was stationed in Taji. Um, so I've been in some complex environments. I've been in some high stress, high tension environments. I've had um, situations where I've needed to work with authority. I've needed to de-escalate, and I've also needed to go ahead and find unique ways to go ahead and uh, tackle situations or, or um, get traction. And, and um, we, we did a whole lot of good in Iraq. I was actually there um, when Bush II fired the Iraqi army. We were standing up the new Iraqi army. Um, when I came home, I had a, my baby, uh, my daughter Nia, and I uh, went through the Lake Orion schools. Um, I have uh, education from, my high school education is from Catholic Central in Detroit. Uh, I went to Eastern Michigan University after that for an uh, undergraduate and a master's degree in information science. And most recently through the business school. So information, information systems through the business school. And then I recently uh, retired from General Motors, 19 years at General Motors, standing behind the uh, OnStar brand and some other General Motors brand, but mostly um, the OnStar brand. Um, and a lot of attention, a lot of metrics, a lot of driving the business, uh, working towards EBIT and profitability. All right. I was working for, like, I was responsible for $1 million towards the EBIT goals. So I basically did that with doing a uh, <clears throat> customer satisfaction and uh, an error tracking system for OnStar. So when I stood that up, I mean, I authored that myself when I stood that up. That pretty much it was my fountain of, uh, of value to the business. And then I did other things. Uh, I, I uh, testified to the veracity of data for OnStar. They would um, subpoena me. Well, they would subpoena data from OnStar, and I would go ahead and testify in some uh, profile cases or some domestic abuse cases about being a witness to the veracity of the data. A lot of times people would leverage OnStar, you know, in a domestic situation to gain access to a vehicle, and then you can go ahead and ascertain which device was doing that, and I would have to testify to that. Some other things that I would have to testify to. And um, I recently went ahead and uh, retired from uh, General Motors. I retired from the Army National Guard, and uh, I bought a new house in uh, Orion Township on Clarkson Road, and I've been going ahead and educating myself on new technologies. Um, I'm working, uh, so my most recent degree is from the University of Texas, Austin in 2023, and that's in data science and analytics, right? So uh, a lot of machine learning, uh, a lot of modeling, you know, and I think that the, um, you know, it's a, one thing I've learned 
is uh, you need the data, you need accurate data. You don't necessarily need the most granular data, but you need enough data to go ahead and answer your questions, to make your hypothesis, you know, and go ahead and follow the data to go ahead and understand what your organization is doing. And I think I can help there. I think I can help with um, conversations and with relationships with the Lake Orion teachers. My goal would be to, I mean, you've already, we've already got a great school system. I mean, we really have a very nice ecosystem of education here for the children. And we just want to go ahead and continue to grow that, right? So I could help do that. And um, I think that's about where, where I'm at. I don't want to go ahead and ramble, <laughs> you know? So I'll give you some time to throw some my way. All right. What do you see as the differences between a board member's role in district oversight and district operations? Well, I see us, uh, the board is the legislative, right? So we're going to go ahead and put those, we're going to be accountability. We're going to be, a, uh, we're going to be accountability. We're going to have a relationship with the, the uh, executive, which would be the supervisor of schools. We're going to, and we're going to track them to their metrics. We're going to agree on metrics. We're going to agree on goals. We might not agree on all of them, but we're going to be agreeing on the big ones, and then we're going to decide how we want to track to those goals. And there shouldn't be any surprises, you know, but you're, that's what I would think that the, the role of the board is. Did I miss it? I, sorry, I didn't write your question down. You had like four of them in there. I no, think that I had, was, that an answer, so I'll turn it over to Mr. Taylor for the next question. Certainly. Identify the two biggest challenges facing Lake Orion schools and explain how, as a board member, you might propose tackling these challenges. Two biggest challenges? Yes, sir. Reading is low compared to Clarkston. Well, actually, we're above Clarkston and in uh, Oxford in reading, but we're not as good. We should, be, we should be doing better in reading and math. There's room to grow there. The SATs and the ACTs are low. That'd probably be one, the academic achievement. And the other one, I would say, I'm coming from a security standpoint. You know, you want to go ahead, you want to create a, I mean, I think we're already there, but keep going ahead and growing a fun place for, for students, parents, and teachers to all go ahead they haven't learned, and I really, I believe that the, um, I've read some of the um, performance reviews, you know, I'm a, I'm a guy who does uh, uh, customer satisfaction, right? So I go ahead and I read through some of the outlines. You know, I go, I look at Dragons, Dragons great, Dragons great, well, da -da 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 -da. get down to the bottom. We got more engagement on that stuff. Like uh, I was at Niche, and they, we had 105 reviews, and I, I wrote it down, it's in here. I think it was 85% were positive, were either a four or a five star. But threes and below was 15%, and they were mentioning transportation, they were mentioning food, they were mentioning drugs. And I have, um, I can corroborate this with uh, my daughter. My daughter told me, you know, she saw drugs being exchanged in the school. I, I didn't really dig into it. I figure I needed, I, I'm like, a, I'm a, before I go ahead and, so like, I'm aware, right? I ask a couple of questions. She felt safe. She didn't want to dig into it. But if I had heard it again, I would have dug even further and I would have rose the, risen the issue. So that's what I would go ahead. A security standpoint, the reading and the math and the security, that whole, so here you go ahead and, um, those kids, that are, you know, playing with drugs. They need, to, from, a, from a safety standpoint, from a teaching standpoint, they're obviously in some sort of a distress or they need some sort of education. They shouldn't be doing that so young, right? I think one of the things in my letter I was big on, alcohol awareness, drug awareness, all those things, because the kids being young, they're growing up, they don't understand. I, you know, we were all can go back and I think remember when we were children and it, it's just you're starting to spread your wings and fly away and you know, it's some things look good and you're experimenting. So my point is this, is that, you know, anytime you see something like that in the classrooms, there needs to be, and I, there needs to be uh, 
an idea of what right looks like to go ahead and engage that problem or student and, and, and be, you know, have firm guidelines, but not overbearing, right? We're, you know, educators, we're not out to go ahead and put somebody in a police car and send them away. We're, we're but I think, you know, those are definitely areas where you just really need to go ahead and focus in on them. If they're, they're, you don't know how that's gonna grow. So those are the two. Thank you. Good evening. Hello. How would you approach an issue that comes before the board, which is in opposition to your personal views, or your opinion is in the minority among your fellow board members? Relish it. It's good to be the minority. You know, we should all take a turn being the minority. And my job is to go ahead and, and uh, educate exactly through my experience or through my education or through whatever lens I'm viewing this to go ahead and just educate and make sure that I'm speaking up because I don't think that I would be alone. I'm sure that there would be other people standing in my, um, you know, standing behind me. It's rare that I think that we're alone. I think one of the biggest things about growing up is that so often you feel like you're the only one experiencing this. You gotta realize you're pretty much just like everybody else. You're just kind of growing up and learning. Um, but that's pretty much it. I would, I would enjoy to go ahead and educate the board or why I feel this way, this is how I feel, this is why, and there it is. You know, and then passionate, uh, passionate, you know, <laughs> That kind of, you know, there's there's a place for it. Generally speaking, you know, the um, it's gonna it's gonna go ahead and work itself out. Um, it'll reveal itself in time. You know, what's right, what right, what does right look like? But I think you know we should all be, and I, I I believe that we are. You know, we have the kids in mind. You know, I talk about this ecosystem. You, know, you got kids, you got the board, you got the parents, you got you know. The, 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 the staff, the coaches, they're all playing together in this beautiful place we call the Lake Orion School District. We're a sought after school district, you know? And um, we're, we're, we need to raise the reading, we need to raise the math, we, want, we need to keep the security up, you know? We need to go ahead and be sensitive to children that cry for help. And, uh, you know, how do we react to that? Or how do we go ahead and try to get there before they ask? Does that answer your question? Sure, thank you very much. Yes. Good evening. Board members get information on school issues from a variety of sources. What sources do you believe are the most valuable and appropriate for a board member and how should this information be utilized? I like user sentiment. I like sentiment online, comments online. I like surveys. I think surveys are, I, I think we should be, uh, the graduation rate is at like 95%. I think we ought to be surveying our, our graduates and seeing how they're doing. What do they think? Um, and then you've got newspaper, and then you've got, you know, those, the, 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 the physical, well, you've got what the teachers are filling out. I'm not aware of what, I, I went out to Mesa, Misa, and there's um, the entire plethora you have, you have a, a application programming interface in there that serves up all the data for the school. But you should be able to, we should be able to tap into that and, and go ahead and get, so if somebody go, rumor mill says, quote unquote, blah, 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 right? And then everybody goes, oh my goodness, you know, let's have a fire drill, you know? And it's just like, no, you know, let's have the conversations with the people we need to have the conversations with. Let's get down to, you know, assume the best always unless you see it's on fire, you know? That's what I think. I think user sentiment from, from comments is, drives a business, it'll kill a business. You know, and um, I think that's very important. Thank you. The Board of Education conducts some business during business hours as well as in the evening. We also interact with the community and the schools. And equally important, many issues that come before the board to decide and review require time, ability to study all issues, and do the required research prior to the actual board meeting. 
How do you see yourself managing your time to ensure that you can devote yourself to the responsibilities of a board member? I'm sure I'd have office hours, right? Uh, I'm sure I'm, I'm local to the community. I'm not far away. Um, I'm retired at the moment. I, I'm, I'm considering going back to the workplace, but I would make myself available through, uh, I'm sure I'd partner up with a few of you and just kind of go ahead and say we're having lunch at, a, at some place where it's easy for people to get in there. And then I'm, I'm a volleyball fan. I would be at the volleyball games. I'd be there. You know, did any of you guys ever wonder what would happen if the Lake Orion Dragon and Godzilla got into a fight? No. Godzilla versus the Lake Orion Dragon? No. Is it just me? <laughs> Is it just me? I always kind of thought that would be a great thing to do at a football game is to have uh, Lake Orion Dragon out in the center, you know, and then have this Godzilla come out. You know, kind of beat Clarkston. You got to keep on beating Clarkston. That's all there is to it. LOCS has an operating budget in excess of $105 million with approximately 7,000 students and 1,000 employees. This requires appropriate oversight by the board. Please tell us about your experience managing financial budgets and human resource issues. I've done inspections and supply in the Army, right? Uh, I've gone ahead and gone after fraud. Um, I think that uh, I'd be looking to the treasurer for a lot of the information. If the treasurer feels, if any one of you, um, I know that, like, if I felt uneasy about something, I would definitely bring in somebody else and say, these are my concerns and this is why. We're 5% out. Usually if you're, you know, back and forth, you're 105 million for crying, are we gonna, are we gonna care about pocket change? You know, or, uh, but yeah, that's what I would say. I, depending, I would look. I would look to the treasurer, people who've got experience with, to say what the parameters are. What do you think is too much? What do you think is too little? So I understand what right looks like, and then I do understand pilferable items. You know, you got you got uh, you know construction materials. You got different types of things that can be pilfered, and that's not so much an impact on the budget, it just kind of tells you that the people you have might not be your best choices, or they might need some sort of a conversation and some intervention. But that's generally it. I would look to the expert, I'd talk to them, or I'd say, this does not make sense to me, and this is why, blah, 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 blah. Last year we were bango, and this year we're bingo, and there is, you know, bozo in between. So we'd have to go ahead and figure out if I'm really seeing, you know, if somebody can explain it to me and say, well, we gained 100 students, we gained, uh, what well, we promoted 20 teachers, you know, something like that. The laws changed, you know, we go and just go ahead and try and tie it back to something. But I would definitely bring the rest of the board into it. I, I, bad news doesn't get better with age, you know, you gotta go ahead and, unless you go ahead and you think something's going on. Let the right, let people know. Thank you. Um, is there a closing statement you would like to make as we consider your application? Well, I'm not just here. So um, I've introduced myself to the board. Um, I, if this is, I, I would love to have this uh, job, you know. Um, respect the board's decision. I don't have any complaints. Um, and if there's any way that I can be of assistance, even if I'm not on the seat, I'm, I'm happy to help. Excellent. Go Dragons. Thank Go you. Dragons. Well, thank you for being here this evening. Um, nice to meet you all. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> and thank you for your service. Yes, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate that. Thank you. That's what I...
you. All right. This is bad. This is bad. Now it's ringing in my head. I know. You've created a monster. That is good. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Thank you for applying for the Board of Education vacancy. We have all had the opportunity to review your letter of application and resume and would like to ask you questions regarding your interest in serving as a trustee. To begin, would you please share a brief statement of your involvement with the Lake Orion School District and why you're interested in serving as a trustee? Please include specific skills, background, and experiences you would bring to the Board of Education. So I am interested in the position of the Lake Orion, of a trustee in the Lake Orion um, Board of Education because I I have a couple kids in in the school district and in general I care about uh, the future of our children and our society. Um, so some of my some of my skill sets. So I have a pretty broad range of of skills. So my. Um, uh, a lot of it is in a technical uh, background. Um, there's some aviation maintenance. Uh, there's also some avionics, so some uh, electronics, and then there's um, uh, my engineering, my uh, electrical engineering degree. Uh, I also have a master's in business administration. So uh, I, I, I do have some numbers background. Um, I also was a small business owner. I owned a screen printing company in New Orleans for a few years. Um, so I think, I think that brings a pretty well-rounded uh, background to the table for this position. Excellent. Thank you. What do you see as the differences between a board member's role in district oversight and district operations? So if, if I understand the board's role, it's to, to set the policy, not to run the policy. All right, so so it, it would be it would be other um, other staff out, outside of the board that would actually enact the policy. Okay. Mr. Taylor? Yes, sir. Identify the two biggest challenges facing Lake Orion schools and explain how, as a board member, you might propose tackling these challenges. Uh, so the first, I would say the, the first and most important challenge would be raising, uh, raising our grades to the pre-pandemic levels. So we have, um, from the 2018-2019 school year, to the 22-23 school year uh, in the Engl English language, and this is all that I've done the study on so far, from third to eighth grade. So third grade, we're down 15.8%. Fourth is down 7.1. Fifth is down 9.6. Six. Sixth, 10.7. Seven is 7.5. Eight is 5.2. The numbers are probably better now. Uh, I, I only have 22-23 uh, school year. Um, there, there are numbers, but I would say that, that that's the number one, um, challenge, uh, solving that challenge, uh, I, I would, I would be for supporting any kind of, um, any kind of initiative that would increase an, in, an in emphasis on, um, studies and more effective studies. Um, the number two, I think, uh, the number two challenge would probably be uh, contract negotiations because the, the new rules that went into effect February, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the, the rules that were uh, enacted in 2011 and they were reversed last year went into effect February, um, uh, which used to bar bargaining for some things, but now they're going to be on the table. So I think that's a pretty big challenge uh, moving forward. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. How would you approach an issue 
that comes before the board, which is in opposition to your personal views, or your opinion is in the minority among your fellow board members? I would stick to my opinion <laughs> and, and voice it. I mean, there's bound to be some disagreement and that's probably healthy to a degree. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Board members get information on school issues from a variety of sources. What sources do you believe are the most valuable and appropriate for board member, and how should this information be utilized? For a board member, I, I, I would imagine the best source of information uh, on the district for a board member should be straight from the, um, the, the staff that works for the district and the superintendent. Um, and, and how that should be utilized in, in what manner? Like in, in setting policy? How should the information be utilized that you uh, receive from the various sources that you choose to use? Um, as a board member, I would use it to set effective policy. Thank you. The Board of Education conducts some business during business hours as well as in the evening. We also interact with the community and the schools. And equally important, many issues that come before the board to decide and review require time, ability to study all issues, and do the required research prior to the actual board meeting. How do you see yourself managing your time to ensure that you can devote yourself to the responsibilities of a board member? Um, so I would have to I would have to drop some some things in my life to make uh, to make room for the requirements of a board member. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> LOCS has an operating budget in excess of one hundred and five million, with approximately seven thousand students and one thousand employees. This requires appropriate oversight by the board. Please tell us about your experience managing financial budgets and human resource issues. So, as a as a small business owner, I I managed our I managed our taxes and. I, I also handled our uh, the ordering of our supplies. Um, so this was a screen printing company. So I I, I handled ordering of the blank shirts, the ink, um, any other material that we that we use for the printing process. Usually like a like a spray on adhesive, and I mean those are like the the major stuff. But there's plenty of other stuff that had to be managed and and, and ordered and accounted for. Um, we didn't have a lot of employees, so I didn't have a lot of experience from uh, human resources background. Uh, I probably had more from uh, from the Navy, so I was I was Navy 03 to 08, uh, and uh, by my fourth year, I was E5, and that's a uh, an avionics shop. That's a shop supervisor. So uh, I had five other technicians that I was working with and managing. Um, so that would that would be the um, the breadth of my human resource background. Thank you. Um, is there a closing statement you would like to make as we consider your application? Uh, I would like to thank everyone here for their time, you know, and uh, I would also um, uh, like to share my... Um, I guess condolences to the family of Mr. Dracos, um, you know, and, um, but I just hope that the right candidate gets a spot and we get, the end result is I want smarter, well-rounded kids at the end of the day, right? And young adults. So I would say that's, that's it. Thank you, thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. you so much for your time this evening. And thank you for your service. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome.
Um, if we just want to take a couple minutes to review, like on our own or whatever, just to gather. Can we just finish this one. Yep. Like the old heads up, look at you when we're ready to. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Just give me a thumbs up when you guys are ready for discussion. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Thank you. I know. I, I know. I brought it out. It was much easier. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Made taking notes a lot easier. Are we all yeah. ready? Mm -hmm. I think so, right? Susan, ready? Are you ready? I think we're ready. <laughs> we are Gentlemen? Ready. Yes, everyone, I think, has had a moment to um, go through all our notes and whatnot from this evening. So, of course, first and foremost, I would like to thank all the applicants, um, you know, for, for submitting their materials and being here um, you know, with us this evening, it's obvious we have a lot of people who are very passionate about your schools, and so we're very fortunate um, to have seven people come out and want to jump into this role. So um, thank you to everyone um, that put themselves out there. I know it's not always easy to do that either. Um, so, you know, um, you know, oh, my deepest gratitude on that. So um, honestly, if we just, you know, kind of want to go on down and have some discussion, um, you know, um, if we, I think just, if we want to maybe just indicate if our, you know, our first choice at this point, and if there's a consensus in that, um, you know, we can we can move on, you know, go from there, and if not, then we can have um, discussion about, you know, a, a second choice candidate. So, um, so Susan, I'm actually putting you on the spot tonight. You're always in the middle, so yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. So you get Thank to go you. first tonight. Uh, well, I'm recording all the open yes. positions as well. Um, I also want to echo your gratitude to the candidates. It's wonderful that we had seven, seven community members that were willing to come tonight, speak with us about their experiences. I think they were all very well. Arti they were all very articulate, what represented themselves well, and I think um, we're very fortunate to have such active community members. Um, I think that given the current situation we're in with what we're undergoing, there's um, a lot on our plate as a school board right now. I think there is a definite um, 
advantage to us to have someone that joins our board that has board experience. I think that there's one candidate who has been on the board in the you know the last few years. I think that brings a lot to the board that he could join us, uh, kind of hitting the ground running. Um, as a new board member, now I'm four years in, right. similar to Danielle, I think I can probably speak for you as well. Those first few months, you really are trying to get your legs underneath you. 100%. And this really is a short-term position through the election. So I think there's an extreme value in having someone who's done it before and can hit the ground running. So um, my first candidate to, to choose would be Nate. Perfect. Thank you, Susan. Burgett. Um, I, too, want to thank all our candidates. I think there's one point I don't well, so we're like, do you think anybody's going to apply for this position? Right. It's a lot of work. And so to have seven come out really was encouraging to me personally that there were community members that were willing to join us in this important role. But um, I can't add anything else to what you said about the importance of where we're at. And I, too, have a number one choice, and it is Nate Bucky. Thank you. Scott. Echo, echo. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's awesome. And um, I think I'm the only one on the board that I was appointed um, 10 years ago, and um, I know it's tough. It's it's scary. I think we had nine that time, but the fact that seven people came out, put yourself out there, um, I think it's it's great that um, you want to get involved, and and I think that in other circumstances, we might be able to take um, take the time to foster a new board member because I think we had some really good talent up here and some really good people. Um, but I, I agree with, with a five month time frame um, is, is all that's needed right now. Um, I, I also pick Nathan Butke. Thank you. Jake. Uh, ex exactly. One, one perspective I'll bring when I thank all the candidates that it was really great to hear the thoughts about the district from seven involved candidates like it's it's just not that often that you it was almost like a 15 20 minute discussion about what are the issues going on in the districts and they were all great at articulating you know what what they see for the district and that's going to help all of us as board members so i do appreciate that they all came in when it comes to selecting the candidate it's the exact same opinion that that having someone who knows what we're going through, especially because we have the superintendent search, that that is you know such a, a big responsibility. And I went through it last time on the board as others uh, did with with Nate and I very much value what he brought to the process then and then his ability to get up to speed because next week we'll be doing those interviews mm -hmm. and like you said, hit the ground running. So my first choice was also Nate Bucky. Thank you, and I'm last, but um, you know, Susan and I were talking a little bit on some of our breaks. You know, we were in this position, right, in 2020. We, yeah. we applied to, um, for a seat on the board, so we can completely appreciate how much it takes to do that, like to how much, you know, putting yourself out there. So once again, thank you, but um, ditto, 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 um, you know, it is, we just have so much going on right now and, and having an experienced board member to be willing to come back and do this, right, and step in is huge. And um, so my choice is uh, Nate Bucky as well, so. Okay, well, <laughs> obviously um, we have a consensus of the board. So um, from there we can um, just move right into our action item. So may I please have a motion to appoint the board trustee? I move to appoint Nate Butkey as board trustee to fulfill a partial year term through the certification of the November 5th, 2024 election. Support. <laughs> Thank you. Any discussion? Roll call. <laughs> yes. 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 Taylor. Yes. The motion passes. So welcome back to the Board of Education, Mr. Bucky. <laughs> we look forward to working with you in the months to come. Um, okay, so recap and next steps. Um, Julie is going to work to contact um, all the candidates. Um, I'll be making a phone call after this as well. And anything else I missed, Julie? 
and Julie's going to take care of logistics of getting Nate. Um, and yes. And get him filed or something. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Um, closing comments. I'll just open her up. Anything. <laughs> Again, I, th I think we uh, we reiterated how much we we appreciate mm -hmm. folks coming out and this this is kind of a thankless job that a lot goes into a lot that folks don't know um, the time commitment and um, I just really appreciate folks coming out. And a huge thank you to Julie for all she did. Yes. And it continues to do to help us through all these special scenarios. Yes. And, and I think um, all of us would be remiss not to mention once more what a great loss we've experienced Correct. Um, and why we're here. Mr. Dracos was an amazing board member, an amazing individual. He will be greatly missed, and um, it's, it's a shame we're here tonight. It is, and also on that note, and I, I think Scott can share this, Simon, as well. well. One of the last conversations I had with Steve when it was clear he was not going to be returning to us, he actually indicated that if we had to replace him, he wanted it to be Nate, um, because he had a lot of respect um, for him. So thank you, Steve. <laughs> so I had to explain it to him that we that we couldn't that we had to go through a process. <laughs> right, but but just, either way, um, couldn't just be, but but perfect. So with that, I thank everybody, and uh, we are adjourned. Thank you.